In writing this article, our hope is that our analysis will inform a set of debates about public education in the City of Toronto and about how the Toronto District School Board devises different kinds of programs that might address issues of equity and equality across the city. Our hope is that this uh, article will uh, open up a debate about what exactly is the purpose of having specialized arts high schools in the city, about who should have access to these programs, and about how to make that access a reality, and about what kind of curriculum and pedagogy should characterize these places if their purpose is in fact to serve a broad population of the city, and if it is in fact to contribute to the cultural life of the city. So to give you a little bit of context, specialized arts programs in Toronto have existed for quite a long time. Actually, they got date all the way back to the 1950s. But this idea of a specialized arts high school that is intended to cater to students who have interest in the arts and that provides training in different disciplines uh, emerged in the 1980s following the famous movie Fame that you may recall. And they're modeled after that school, in fact, in some places. And the idea behind these programs was that these would be schools that would be spread out across the city. In fact, there are schools in all the quadrants of the city city, they're in the east, in the west, in the north, in the center, uh, and that would give access to students all across the district uh, to uh, training in the arts, specialized training in the arts, uh, during their secondary careers. That's the premise of these schools, is to uh, give opportunities to students all across the district. And so they're presumably supposed to be very diverse, and they're supposed to draw students from all across the city, uh, but in fact what our research shows is that they do not do that. So in our analysis of the data, we focused on three variables. We focused on family income. Uh, students, race or ethnic identification, and the level of education of the parents. And a call across all three variables, what we found is that students uh, with a lot of privilege are overrepresented uh, in specialized arts high schools across all three variables. So for example, in terms of uh, economic uh, family income, uh, we found that most of the students in specialized arts high schools come from the top three deciles of family income, which is to say that they come from the wealthiest families, upper middle class and upper class families in the city. In addition to that, white students are overrepresented in these high schools, so that there are, there are twice as many white students in specialized arts high schools in terms of proportion than in the rest of the, of the district, whereas students of color, and particularly Southeast Asians, are way underrepresented in terms of the proportion of students in the schools versus the district school board. And likewise, most of the students in specialized arts high schools uh, are more likely to have parents who have high levels of education, who have university degrees, uh, which is, of course, uh, associated with high levels of cultural capital and with access to things like um, dance education, ballet, instrumental training. Uh, so this, again, helps us uh, get a better understanding of what is the family background of the students that attend these high schools. Uh, so we also wanted to know whether this demographic homogeneity of the schools was unique to the programs or whether it sort of started in the program. So we looked also to the demographics of the schools, the middle schools from which the students are attending uh, high schools. And what we found is that these schools also have fairly homogeneous and very similar student populations as the specialized arts high schools in the city of Toronto. So the reason why these findings together are important is because they help give us a better and clearer picture of what is the problem. If we only focus on the student demographics uh, at the schools, then we might assume that the problem is the admissions process, that somehow the admissions requirement, which expects students to have training uh, in a classical instrument like a violin or piano, or to have several years of ballet training, then, then the conclusion would be that we just have to change the admissions in order to create a diverse school. But our findings complicate this because they suggest that actually the students that are attracted to the programs themselves are homogeneous. So it isn't just an issue of admissions. And so uh, when we look at our previous uh, research, uh, we conclude that in fact, it could be that the curriculum that is being offered at these schools, which is also Eurocentric and very narrowly focused on a very particular kind of understanding about what it means to be an artist and what kinds of artistic practices are the ones that are being taught at the schools, that that in itself is producing a homogeneous environment by attracting uh, students and families that are only in, that are interested in that kind of curriculum and education. And so it raises the question about what should be the purpose of these schools, who should be attracted to them, and what kind of curriculum in the arts should these schools be offering in order to become more heterogeneous and more like the student population that the Toronto District School Board seeks to serve uh, equally and equitably.